Hokey dokey. In this problem, it's pretty much the same as 343A, but it's just more practice with the quotient rule. If you'd like more of a breakdown for the quotient rule, please visit that other video with 343A because I spend a lot of time kind of breaking things down. So we're going to jump right into it. We have this function. I'm going to go ahead and group the negative with the numerator, calling this A. The denominator is B. So F prime always starts with A prime. So A prime is the derivative of A, which is negative 5 sine of T. The derivative of negative 5 sine of T is negative 5 cosine of T. And then B comes next, 2 to the negative T. Big minus in the middle, big A next, regular A from the numerator, and then we end with b prime, the derivative of 2 to the negative t. Anytime you have a number raised to an x term or t term, whatever the variable is, we keep that same exact term. Then we multiply by ln of the base number, ln of 2. And then this one actually requires a small chain rule piece, the derivative of negative t. The derivative of the inside negative t is negative 1. So we tack that on to b prime's derivative. Now, on the bottom we have b squared, so 2 to the negative t all squared. All right, now these problems are super fun because they like to simplify them in fun ways. So I think one of the most helpful things is figuring out the signs of your two terms on top. So um, and before we do that, actually, let's cancel out any answers that don't have cosine and sine and ln of 2. So this has cosine, this has ln of 2 and sine, so, so far so good. ln of 2, cosine, but no sine. And, oh, cosine, ln of 2, but no sine. Okay, making some progress, right? So then we're left with these two. Let's figure out the signs of the terms on top because I'm convinced that's all we need to find our answer. I'll talk about what I mean. This is one of our terms on top. So all the terms multiplied together make one term, right? The sign of this term must be negative just based on that one negative out in front. And there's no negative here to multiply by it to make it positive, none of that. So we have, so far, negative, right? And now, second term, we have this whole thing here with the minus out in front, this negative here, as well as this negative 1, which is super important to include from the chain rule. Negative times a negative, so negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. Negative times negative is positive, so that positive times one more negative is negative. In other words, these two are both negative. More importantly, they're the same sign, which means we might see these terms represented as either, uh, like say a negative is factored out, then we might have a negative factored out with both of these terms being positive. But the biggest thing is that they are the same sign, so they should never have opposite signs, as in option D. Even if this term is factored out, whatever that is, this term, this first term, is positive. And then there's a minus, so this term is negative for the second term. And so these have opposite signs, but we know they're both negative. They should be the same sign. So in option A, it looks like they factored out a negative, and now both these terms, so cosine and ln of 2 sine of t, oh goodness, uh, are positive. So they're the same sign is what I'm getting at. So regardless of how they simplify it, just analyzing the signs could hopefully help you identify your answers. So the rest of what they've done basically is factor out. A, or actually, sorry, starting with the 2 to the negative t's, they basically canceled 1 from each term, leaving us with 1 on the bottom, since it was squared originally on the bottom. And then 2 to the negative t is equivalent 
to writing a 2 to the positive t up top. And then they factored out, I think, just a negative 5. And then the 2 to the negative t from both terms. Or a 2 to the t from both terms. And then it leaves us with a cosine and then the sine of t and ln of 2. But again, the signs are the important pieces you need. Let's... So I realize I, I missed one from 343A. Let's see how fast we can get through this one. And then I might do a second video for 343B. Um, so I included A in this one because, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. So jumping right into it, we're starting with A prime of the numerator. 5e to the z has a derivative of 5e e to the z. Then we have a 5e to the z. Then we have b prime, the derivative of 1 over z. 1 over z can be rewritten as z to the negative 1. This is the method. Anytime you have a variable in a denominator like this that you need to quickly take the derivative of. So the derivative of z to the negative 1 is negative 1z to the negative 2 using power rule. So we have negative z to the negative 2. Or let's go ahead and rewrite this as negative 1 over z to the positive 2. All right. And then all of this is over b squared, right? So b squared is 1 over z squared. So now, looking in the numerators, probably a big thing to start with is, do we have two big terms across the top? Because option A only has one big term. So it's out of here. Now, let's do a similar method. Can we analyze the signs of these terms? So this first term, I only see positives. So I believe this first term should be positive. The second term, negative, negative, makes a positive. So in other words, they are the same sign altogether. Do they have something like that here. Well, it looks like option D has a positive term, then a negative term or a minus term, right? So those are technically opposite signs. So we can eliminate that one. But then the remaining two looks like they have positive terms, but then negative, negative, which would make the second term a positive as well. So let's see what else we can use to find our answer. Oh, I see it. Okay. Both terms have e to the z. This term does not. So c is out of here. So we break out the eraser to see that b is our answer. So, you know, keep in mind, just use like little facts you know about both terms to help eliminate other options as you work through.